Hello everyone, welcome to the channel Wales and Tales. Uh, today we will continue our discussion of Geeta Hariharan's novel Fugitive Histories which was published in 2009. In the first video that I have posted regarding this novel, we have discussed part 1 which is titled Missing Persons. Today we will discuss part 2 of this novel which is titled Crossing Borders. So as the title itself suggests that it is something related to borders. Now which kind of borders Hariharan is talking about? Hariharan is actually talking about physical borders as well as emotional and psychological borders. When it comes to physical borders, so the physical borders that are being transgressed, that are being crossed, are the borders of the states. You know, when Sarah and Nina cross the borders of Mumbai and visit this place called Ahmedabad. And why Ahmedabad? Because they are working on a documentary wherein they have to collect the anecdotes of the victims of 2002 Gujarat rights and they have to stay in Ahmedabad for a couple of days in order to collect uh, the anecdotes of the families who have endured uh, the pain of the rights. Now emotional and psychological borders, you know, in order to get information, in order to get to know about what they have endured during 2002, so it is very important that they are able to cross the emotional and psychological boundaries or the emotional and psychological borders, you know, of the people of the victims so that they can get the information. So what they'll do that uh, when they'll first go and uh, meet uh, the families uh, which are, are being relocated in a new locality after the rights, they will go without cameras, without diaries, without anything so that they can develop a kind of intimacy uh, with the victims. And uh, the first uh, family that uh, they will be meeting in Ahmedabad, it is the family of Ali's. You know, they are Ali's. And in this family, uh, we have uh, three people. Uh, one is Yasmin. Yasmin is the daughter in this family who is preparing for her 12th boards. And uh, then uh, we have here Akbar. And Akbar is uh, the boy. Akbar is the uh, young uh, boy when he was missed in Gujarat rights and uh, it's been five years you know it's they are going to Ahmedabad Sara uh, is going to Ahmedabad after five years and it's been five years that we have no record of Akbar who is missed and it is being told time and again in the novel that it is better to be missed than to be dead but uh, what pain it gives to the family is better explained by uh, Yasmin and her parents. Now in her family uh, we have a uh, old man, a helpless father, who has lost everything in the rights and the mother of Yasmin. She is a seamstress and this is how she is sustaining her family. So through uh, Yasmin, uh, she is, Hari Haran is actually telling you the stories of so many families uh, who have endured the pain during the rights. Now Hari Haran is talking about the physical damage that happened to the victims, the psychological damage that happened to them, economical of course, destruction and ruin that are being you know wrecked upon them uh, during the rights by the of course by the mob. Mob which has become everything at that time, which has become government, which has become administration, which has become ministers, which has which has become law and order as stated by Hari Haran in the novel. Uh, another thing which is very important is the locality where they are being relocated now, the victims are being re relocated. It is actually very filthy and dingy locality. It is not only physically filthy and physically dingy but psychologically also it is very grim because everyone there has lost something or the other. So the grim atmosphere, the painful atmosphere, the sorrowful atmosphere itself is adding to the pain of the victims, right? So they could not forget what had what happened to them five years ago. So the victims have lost everything. The victims have lost the place uh, where they have born and uh, the victims have lost the place where they have so many memories and the place is not somewhere far away from the relocated place, you know. They had not been relocated to some other state. They are being re relocated in that area only and they can see their place. But the tragedy is they cannot visit it. They can only revisit that place in their memories. So they are not allowed to go there, you know. Internal borders has become in the state itself where certain section of people are not allowed to cross a, a, dif a different space which is inhabited by altogether different community, right? So Hariharan reveals the loopholes and weaknesses of institutions as well like how law and order institution how how the institutions which are responsible for maintaining law and order could not do anything during those times the reason best known to them only right uh, so this lawlessness that happened during the rights 
and after the rides why after the rides because many people many young boys got missed during those rides and when the families are going to lodge their complaint in the police station to get to know about uh, their missing people their missing relatives their missing sons their missing brothers they are being harassed and humiliated as stated by hari haran through the depiction of the harassment and humiliation that is being endured by yasmin's parents whenever they go to police station to inquire about akbar and another important thing in this section which hari haran has highlighted it is the in betweenness of these characters you know why in betweenness because they could not forget their past and uh, they are waiting for happy future in the present which is very dark you know so there is very liminal position of these victims which is being highlighted by hari haran in the novel and it is not only the story of yasmin it is not only the story of akbar or the alis that is being narrated hari haran in this section gives a brief detail of every character especially women who have endured so many physical psychological tortures during those rides and uh, they are still enduring you know the psychological pain cannot be forgiven cannot be forgotten sorry so zahida is one such character zahida khala is one such character maryam is another zaki zakia reshma nasreen zainab zulekha these are the few women through their portrayal uh, hari haran has highlighted that how these women have endured the physical and psychological tortures during the ride and why there are less men and more women because you know it is the men who are being killed and uh, it is the women who are being physically tortured and left to live after uh, that grim physical and psychological pain so it is always the women you know who have to endure the havoc wrecked by patriarchy and uh, because of uh, moreover without any fault of theirs you know Nevertheless uh, there are so many people who are telling their stories to uh, Sara when she is collecting the uh, stories along with Nina and uh, Yasmin has in her solo look you know it is not she has expressed it loudly but uh, she was just thinking that they are just voices nothing else all these people who are telling their stories they are just voices nothing else because if they were really bodies if they were really bodies if they are really people really people na wouldn't someone have heard them right if they are human beings they must have been heard but no one have heard them by now given them some justice in five long years so it's been five long years they are being crying they are being suffering they are being narrating their ordeals but nothing has happened so it seemed to sara it seemed to yasmin that they were only voices you know they were if they were not really bodies or they are not really people right another character has made this another important assertion that we are in jail at home you know at our own place we are living in jail and uh, another thing which has happened in this novel is that sara is able to make sense of her identity that she has realized that she is happy with sara only without affiliating herself to any particular religion and this is how section 2 ends section 2 ends with uh, sara visiting sabarmati ashram why sabarmati ashram because it belongs to one and only father of nation mahatma gandhi who is the symbol of non violence who is the symbol of peace and she laments the loss of the nation there and she asks gandhi that what has become of your nation you know this nation that you have dreamed of has turned so hostile towards the members of their own nation so she is complaining she is lamenting and she is very sad after collecting all the anecdotes now uh, after visiting sabarmati ashram uh, sara comes back to delhi why delhi because her mother is living in delhi and she asserts to her mother she makes this statement that mother i'm so proud that i belong to the hybrid identity why hybrid identity because you are hindu you belong to hinduism my father belonged to islam and i'm happy i consider myself fortunate that i have this hybrid identity so that i can live with peace i can live with peace with both the communities you know i need not to hate any community just because of my particular religion since i am a human and i love all the human beings irrespective of their religion and this is the philosophy of asad also right so in part third of this video i'll talk about part third of the novel only which is funeral rites and we will discuss about asad uh, which we have discussed in part 1 also and how he'll come back to part 3 and through the memory of her his wife you know uh, mala okay so for this 
video this much we have covered that is part 2 wherein sara and nina visited ahmedabad collected anecdotes of the various victims and uh, then she comes back to delhi where her mother is living and making peace with her hybrid identity all right everyone thank you so much